Because of my interest and the circles I generally travel in, uh, Neville Goddard has been a name that I've been familiar with for some time. And while I've read his works and uh, various of his works and owned various of his books, I had never really put a lot of time into practicing uh, his methods. And then for some reason, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I decided I was going to dive in a little bit and attempt what he specifically describes as the ladder experiment. And what ended up being really odd about this is uh, when I looked back at when I started doing that, it ended up being Neville Goddard's birthday uh, on the day that I started. And so I believe in synchronicities. And so um, that that felt like an auspicious start to my experiment. But if you don't know the ladder experiment, basically Neville Goddard says, uh, Write, I will not climb a ladder on a piece of paper, put it in your wallet, write it on your mirror so you see it while you're shaving. Basically surround yourself with the message, I will not climb a ladder. Um, for me, I put it as the uh, lock screen on my phone and I put it as the desktop wallpaper on my computers so that I would see everywhere the message, I will not climb a ladder. But then at night, as you're going to bed and you're lying in sleep and you're, or you're lying about to go to sleep, and you're kind of in that drowsy state, um, start imagining yourself climbing a ladder. And um, Goddard makes it uh, clear that you don't need to picture yourself from a distance climbing a ladder, but you need to be in the first person climbing the ladder. So your, your head is where, or, or the camera is where your eyes would be and your, your hands and your feet are moving in front of you. And I discovered when trying this, uh, imagining myself climbing a ladder is very awkward and it doesn't flow and my my legs and arms moved in a strange way and I really had trouble naturally picturing myself climbing a ladder for some reason I have no idea why uh, but I but I saw online where somebody else did this exercise but instead of climb a ladder it was throw a tennis ball and so uh, I decided I'd try that um, I didn't have any tennis balls in the house at the time, but I put, I will not throw a tennis ball in all the places. And then um, when I was lying in bed at night, I would feel the tennis ball in my hand. And that was something I could kind of imagine easily. And I would imagine myself throwing it overhanded. And that was something I could do um, easily. And so uh, the next day uh, after doing that for the first time, I went on a walk and I thought, and one of the things Neville, um, emphasizes that you're not supposed to try and figure out how this is going to happen. You're not going to, you're not supposed to be like, mm, where will I see a tennis ball? And where can I go that'll make this more likely to happen? You're just supposed to trust the universe will make it happen. But um, I, I still, when I went on a walk the next day, I thought, what if I came across a tennis ball laying on the ground? Um, and that would be part of the job. The other part of the job would be throwing it. I'd have to have a natural reason to throw it. But I, I kind of thought, you know, this is going to happen on a walk somehow because um, I don't have a tennis ball at home. So I'm going to have to find one elsewhere. But anyway, uh, I, I for about a week, uh, you know, I, I did the exercise for two or three nights. And then for, um, for two or three days, I looked for the tennis ball and never found it. And um, honestly, kind of forgot about it. Um, and then yesterday I was on a walk, or not yesterday, the day before I was on a walk, and lo and behold, I found a tennis ball on the ground. And I was I was kind of blown away by it. I was like, oh my God. And so I picked it up and I carried it with me. And I'm like, okay, this is part one. Part two is I'm gonna have to throw it for some reason. Um, and I really wanted to, I wanted to, I mean, I could have just chosen to throw it. And I don't know if that would, um, violate the the spirit of the exercise or not but I kind of wanted for the universe to present me with a reason to throw it um and so the next day I was taking my son to school and I was telling I was showing him the tennis ball and I was telling him I found it and he's like can I have it and so I was like sure and I kind of tossed it to him backwards into the back seat um and I thought okay I, I threw it so I guess that was it but in throwing it to him in the back seat I do it did it underhanded and in, in my imagination, it had always been overhanded. And so it kind of felt like a cheat, to be honest. Um, but in my mind, I was like, well, I threw it, whatever. Uh, so so the ex this exercise worked. Uh, and then 
uh, yesterday I was bringing my son home from school and when we got home our dog Miles the black lab he got uh, he's not an outside dog he got out of the house and he was running around in the front yard and um, he's not the kind of dog to go running off and, and escape into into the wild but still you don't you know it's dangerous you don't want him to get hit by a car he doesn't know what cars are so uh, when we saw him my son he especially panicked he was like oh no we gotta get him in and uh, I wasn't quite as panicked but I was like let's get him inside and so we're calling for him we're shaking the food bag and stuff and he's not coming and um, he loves to play and I thought oh the tennis ball and um, I reached in, it was in the car, I, I reached in the car and I threw it, uh, threw it overhanded and he saw it and he chased it and that gave us an opportunity to grab him and get him inside. It didn't occur to me while this was happening that I was throwing the tennis ball how I had imagined um, and that the universe, the universe had created a situation where I was forced to throw it the way I had imagined. Um, and so uh, the you know the latter thing didn't work for me, but that's because my weird brain can't uh, adequately picture climbing a ladder. But throwing a tennis ball, um, using that as my stand-in for the Neville Goddard exercise, um, that worked, uh, and it worked in a in a profoundly weird, um, unexpected way. Um, and so that's just my report on uh, on the Neville Goddard experiment. Um, of, of course, the next step then is like, okay, well, instead of throwing a tennis ball, let's uh, let's let our mind uh, create um, something that we really want more than throwing a tennis ball. And and so, if you don't know Neville Goddard, the idea is that um, your subconscious mind. Um, which speaks in images, obviously, like we give it the image that represents the ach the attainment of a desire, and then we picture that. And then picturing it as we're going to sleep, going through the hypnog hypnagogic phase, um, we basically rocket that image to the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind, which is um, connected to the all mind, the over mind, the God mind. Um, it has the ability there to figure out, okay, well, let's make this happen. Um, and I, I appreciate, you know, uh, Goddard obviously uh, has strong beliefs about the subconscious mind and what it's capable of, and um, but he suggests an experiment so you can prove it to yourself, and that's em embracing the rational mind and um, or the conscious mind. I think any advancement we make on this planet. Uh, is going to happen when our conscious mind and our unconscious mind are working together. And so that's what I appreciate about Goddard, is that he doesn't neglect either part of the equation. He says, yes, um, conscious mind, yes, rational mind. And he would go on to say, um, our rational mind is what imagines the thing that we want. It's, it imagines our desire. So he includes it in the process from beginning to end. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to tell you about my experience.